Hey guys, we found a beautiful neighborhood to hang out. We're just riding all around town with these speed pedal X. This is Joaquin from Bulls. How's it going? That's oh, good, man. We got a couple of these bikes out here. We're looking at this one the other day. Uh, this is the Urban Evo 10. Look at these nice le leather accents. You'll notice that this one's using the Purion display and it's got the triple LED supernova light in the back. Same light on this bike. This is the focus of the review. This is the iconic Evo TR1 Speed. It has the triple lights. They just aren't quite wired in right. And actually the tires on this, they're not stock. Uh, the light needs some adjustment. There are a few little things here. Even this chain ring up here, this is 38 tooth. They're gonna upgrade it to 42 uh, since it's a speed pedal X. So I've tried to get all those stats right back at the site, but I wanted to be uh, just up front with you guys in case something looks a bit off compared to what you're reading. Uh, I, I love this bike. It's full suspension. Urban Speed Pedelec, right? 120 millimeters of travel up front, 120 millimeters in the rear. SR Sun Tour uh, Unair. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it does have lockout and it also has, let's see if we go down here, rebound. Same thing in the front. It's actually got compression. See, there's multiple settings all the way to lockout. Air, both front and rear. So you can sag this for your body weight four frame sizes and a lot of adjustment between the different sizes, including like the stem. Look at this nice adjustable angle so you can be forward and more aggressive if you're into speed or upright and comfortable. If you're like me and you've got a sensitive back and neck, love the ergonomic grips. They are locking. Pretty neat that they're doing so much between the different models uh, to dial it in, to get that fit right. And Bulls has a huge network of dealers. Yeah. You guys have been in the US for the past three-ish years. It's right. a big German brand. And, you know, for me, being able to touch a bike, hop on, take it for a ride, see all the new details and all the new updates and stuff, like check this headset out. It's an inch and an eighth straight, and they've got these little spacers here that actually separate, so it's a lot easier to run wiring through there. Um, I think it's just a minor thing, but it's something that stood out to me comparing this year to last year. Hydraulic disc brakes, nice Shimano three-finger levers, adjustable reach, 180 millimeter rotors, quad piston up front so you get a little bit more surface area and a little bit more power definitely nice to have that on a bike that weighs 59.8 pounds roughly 60 right. pounds and we are looking at the 44 centimeter frame okay so again four frame sizes that's awesome it only comes in this high step but you'll notice that that top tube slopes down a little bit makes it easier to approach especially if you've got this rack loaded up I, I love this there aren't too many full suspension urban bikes that even have a rear rack now this one is not suspended it's unsuspended weight so you can see that the the shock right here the, the rear swing arms and everything, that's gonna be moving up and down and you're gonna put more work into that rear suspension by loading up this rack, but at least it has a nice rack. You can hang panniers off the side, pannier blockers right here so they don't scuff into those tires and spokes. Uh, it does have like a bungee slot here. And then you'll notice these holes on top. Bulls sells an adapter so you could put a platform, which is nice. A lot of those uh, trunk bags and stuff can be really great uh, for putting like a, maybe an additional water bottle or the charger folding lock and this thing can be key to like it comes with a an abis locking core with that key code card so you can get a matching lock you don't have to carry around a bunch of extra keys and get mixed up right down here we've got traditional bottle cage bosses but comes with this magnetic interface so you can get the monkey link water bottle if you want to just kind of twists on really nice that's something that bulls does with a lot of their bikes and it's kind of unique in the space now coming back to this rack i i don't have a max weight rating for you a lot of times it's 25 kilograms roughly 55 pounds um you know these are metal fenders 70 millimeter width so you're kind of set up here for commuting really well. And in fact, the tires it's coming with are gonna have reflective sidewall stripes. So for me, the safety of having a light with a nice cutout on the side, a light that's pretty well recessed back here. It's gonna be visible, they're actually pretty bright, um, but, but protected. This is not plastic, this is aluminum alloy and it totally shields that light. So if you're flipping the bike over, if you run into something, a countertop or a wall, that light isn't gonna get busted off, which is something I do hear about uh, occasionally, especially people who buy bikes um, like on the internet and get shipped to them. That's a vulnerable uh, part. So I like the Bulls is paying attention to that. 165 millimeter crank arms. We've got a standard 175 millimeter Q factor on this Bosch 
performance line speed and this is fourth generation i'm really excited to talk about that in a minute but first 42 tooth chain ring is what you're going to get narrow wide tooth pattern so it's not going to drop the chain as easily great to have when you're on a speed pedelec nice thick plastic slap guard right here to keep the the bike looking good and then we've got i think it's 11 to 42 teeth uh cassette back here does that sound right to you joaquin yeah, yeah, there it is. There's the 42 tooth marker. And then Shimano Dior with that nice Shadow Plus. It's kind of tucked in on the derailleur and the one-way clutch. So you can lock that. It's going to reduce the bounce. So all of what you'd want for trail riding or for speed pedelec application up to 28 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour. It's just a, just a really clean setup. I also like the shifters up here. So we've got the two-way high, multi-shift low, actually three steps if you want to go all that way. Everything about this is set up the way that I, I personally like. I have a sensitive back and neck and my knee, my left knee is sensitive. So that's how I got into electric bikes. Um, I also do like to go fast. I'm kind of sporty, keep up with traffic and stuff. I want to stay dry. You know, I live in Canada and it gets kind of rainy and stuff. So you're covered. Like everything is just set up really well right here and it's all wired together. So the battery pack, this is the, the Bosch PowerTube 625 and I'm going to get some help here in a second but i want to show you they've moved the charging and locking core up here so it used to be way down here and it was sometimes it was on the other side of the bike it's nice to have it on the drivetrain side of the bike in case the bike tips over it's a little bit less vulnerable an abus key i gotta love that let's see try to line this up while i'm filming perfect so that slots in there there's the charging port you don't have to take the battery out of the bike if you don't want to to charge it nice 1.7 pound 4 amp charger very portable, easy to toss that into a trunk bag if you want to. I'm gonna hand this off. And then there are these new plastic shields. So you just kind of unlock it at the bottom like that. Really lightweight compared to the old Bulls covers. They were aluminum alloy and they bolted directly to the battery. A lot of times they were frame color matched, which meant if you wanted to loan it to your friend, it would kind of clash and it just added weight. So this is this is a lot better solution, easier to replace, cheaper to replace. And what we're seeing here is actually the PowerTube 500 with a spacer. And that's because again, this is a prototype bike. So the end result is that you're probably gonna have a bike that's 60, 60.5 pounds, something like that, based on that difference. Um, so the, the weight I stated earlier is a little bit incorrect. Go ahead and unlock this. Okay, yeah, see how it just drops down to that halfway position and then we can press this button and get it the rest of the way out. So the stock battery is going to be a little bit longer than this. It's going to weigh 7.7 .7 pounds, 36 volts, 17.4 amp hours, which uh, you do the math, it's like 226.4 watt hours pretty high capacity which is great when you're on a speed pedal like because of that air resistance and now this new motor the fourth generation performance line speed gives you quite a bit of power up to 75 newton meters of torque can i hand this off and maybe you can just slot that back on while i'm talking about the uh the speed reader which is something bulls does really well on their bikes so there's like a little magnet that's built onto this disc brake rotor and there's a reader that's just much more protected it's kind of back here with the uh, the rotor itself versus having a little spoke magnet and then a, a reader that's separate. So I like that Bulls has done that on all their models that are using Bosch, it's just much tighter. So the motor controller measures your rear wheel speed, pedal cadence and pedal torque over a thousand times per second, which is awesome. I mean, that's that's very fast and it allows them to do things like shift detection. So as you're pedaling, it's measuring, it's measuring, and it's, it's recognizing, okay, that's your constant pedaling pressure. And then there's a spike in pressure that could come from shifting. And what they do is they back the motor off a little bit, reduce that pressure, and it maintains your drivetrain and your chain a lot better. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna break, it's not gonna bend as much. So I appreciate that. I still tend to uh, like ease off on pedaling when I'm shifting gears. But um, it's just, it, there's that self-protection, something that I really care about. I think about on a bike like this that has so much power. So there's the kickstand, it's positioned in the right place. Plenty of space between it and the crank arm. And you'll notice that pedaling backwards, it doesn't actually cycle the chain ring, which as a traditional bike guy, it's sort of like, well, it'd be nice if it cycled it because I could lube the chain and stuff, but you know, at least it's not spinning freely like some of the Broza motors and some of the other ones that I've seen out there before. Let me try to get away from some of this raking noise here. Um, 
Yeah, so coming back to the motor, one of the things that I really like about it is that it's so compact now. The fourth generation has just done amazing things with this. It's 6.3 pounds versus 8.8 .8 before. Still got this like plastic scuff guard on the bottom. So it's pretty well protected. And it just looks really nice, like integrated in that down tube. Um, up to 75 Newton meters of torque for a speed pedal like is great because it gives you that climbing power that you need and also enough power to hit and maintain 28 miles per hour. Before it was kind of a struggle to get there and maintain it. It's a lot easier now and it's smoother. And I think it's uh, 30.9 millimeters on this seat post right here. It comes in different lengths depending on the frame size. But in addition to being a dropper post with this little lever right here, it's also a bit of a suspension post. So we were experimenting with this back at the house, just kind of pushing down on it. It's tough to see because this is a full suspension bike, but I could actually feel it moving just a little bit. So it just takes another, takes a little bit of the edge off when you go over some some bumps at high speed. And also this saddle, this is e-bike specific from Sully Royale. See how it kind of curves up in the back? That's to sort of like cup your butt, I guess, so you don't fly off the back of this thing in high torque. Really neat. So there's just, there's so much to say about this bike. Uh, yeah, I for me, this is one of my favorites in the Bulls lineup. And I was trying to pick a quiet neighborhood to do this. It turns out it's like the loudest place we could have picked, I guess, but <laughs> you know, hopefully you guys are getting the information. We've got the Bosch Kiox display panel here, which is magnetic and removable, right? It's nice, so people won't be able to tamper with your bike at the bike rack. Gorilla glass, so if it falls off at any point, it should hold up pretty well. It says there's an error, and again, that's because this is like pre-production. We just press this little OK button, and a whole bunch of readouts here. I've actually done a separate video all about this display where I made it with the smartphone app and that's back in the EBR forums. Uh, check it out for more info, but the gist of it is that it has battery percentage readout, 93%, so we're pretty full. Four different levels of assist. Right now, no assist is happening, but we can still see how fast we're going, battery, we could turn on the lights. There's a dedicated light button. And as we push the plus and minus buttons, it goes through the different levels. So green eco tour sport turbo turbo gives you 340 percent feedback sport is 240 tour is 140 and eco is like 60. so you get you get quite a bit of power um you know in increase when you go between the different modes and as we arrow to the right and left you can see a bunch of different readouts like clock range range is so cool because as you change assist levels it dynamically updates that's based on like your last mile of riding which could you know, things that you could do to increase your range are um, keep your battery at like a cool temperature, not too hot. The heat can actually be hard on those lithium ion cells. Uh, definitely don't let it drop all the way to zero if you can help it. That's hard on the cells too long term. Uh, recommend keeping your tire pressure at, at or kind of in the higher level of uh, the recommended range, especially if you're a heavier rider. Pedal along, use the lower levels of assist. Obviously, those are some of the things that are going to help you maximize range. But with such a high capacity battery, you should be good. We go to trip distance, ride time, power, cadence. Cadence is cool because it shows you how quickly you're spinning. I like to spin at a high rate. So with this motor, you can actually get above 120 RPM pedal support. It was the old Bosch performance line motors would get to 120. That was fine or, you know, around there. This is more than that. So they're really supporting a, a whole range of ride styles. If you want to be slow and lumbering, that's fine. If you're like me and you spin fast because maybe you come from a road biking background, that's cool. Especially as you approach a hill, I tend to drop my gears and then spin to get my leverage. Uh, I, I like that this motor won't like kind of get weak on me like some of the other ones. Average speed, max speed. Yeah, a whole bunch of other readouts here. Heart rate. So with the smartphone app, you can actually pair this and uh, get some feedback like biometric feedback and just so cool. Bluetooth, little icon right there. It's a really good display, pretty easy to use with this button pad over here. And I want to mention that as long as you're in one of the four levels of assist, you can use this walk mode here and just hold the plus button and the bike's going to push itself which could be very handy if you've got that rear rack loaded up or maybe you're walking through a park like a craft show or something and you you don't feel comfortable riding around maybe it's not appropriate i feel like they've thought of thought of everything again for me this is this is my favorite model in the bulls line for 2020 just because it's it's most of the riding i do is more urban but i want that comfort and at 55.99 i think that's a pretty reasonable price so let's do it. I'm at the highest level of assist here, turbo. Here we go.
pretty responsive, as you'd expect. Having a standard size chain ring now is, is a big upgrade for me. Um, the old ones, they were like this proprietary sprocket size that would spin two and a half revolutions for every crank revolution. That's just how Bosch set it up. And what that meant was there's a little bit of reduction gearing drag that would happen if you were pedaling without any assist, or if you tried to go beyond the supported assist level, which in this case is 28 miles per hour. So it's feeling pretty stable. Again, 27.5 by 2.4 on those tires. So they are a little bit wider, which gives you some float, some traction, comfort, a um, little bit more friction. You know, it's not quite as efficient as like a slick tire or a really narrow tire. But for me, this bike's all about comfort. They sort of call it the SUV of their line. I'm gonna do some shifting here. Go very easily make it up to 20 miles per hour. Take it off this curb here. There we go. Working great with the brakes. Again, no hands off the curb. Oh, okay, very stable. Yep, that's always a bit of a, a risky one, but there are certain bikes where I can do it without getting injured just because the suspension is so good. And I'm definitely feeling that here. Okay guys, you've got a really good view here. I love that slap guard. Uh, just the attention to detail, really nice paint on these bikes and everything is matching, like the fork, the spokes, the rims. In fact, in the front, we've got 14 gauge spokes and in the rear 13, because a little bit more weight tends to be back here. So uh, just a lot of attention to detail from Bulls. They will have a 42 tooth chain ring for the final build. Uh, it's gonna have the narrow wide tooth pattern and everything, but just keep in mind this is 38 tooth, so my cadence is gonna be a little faster than it would be on the final. And then this is 10 speed, 11 to 42 cassette in the rear. Just a really nice setup. I'm gonna be pedaling along in the highest level of assist, so it's the loudest it's ever gonna be, and also the most responsive, the most powerful. And I'm gonna hit, and then I'm gonna try to beat 28 miles per hour so you can see and hear how the motor just eases out. You definitely can pedal and, and cruise beyond the top speed on these bikes. You just don't get assist. So it's class three, let's do it. Pretty good, I should have downshifted before I came to a complete stop. 120 millimeters of travel is kind of like a cross country setup. And I wish I could see the final tires. I don't know if they're knobby like this or not, but this really is a bike that you could ride around town, take it on, you know, single track a bit, you know, gravel, dirt trails. It's, it's kind of a go anywhere platform. It's very stiff, solid, a little bit heavy. And I think some of that just comes back to the metal fenders and metal rack. Okay guys, we got the front suspension in view. I just thought this would be fun. She can listen for those fenders, uh, watch some of the travel, just anything else from this view. Good boy. Yeah, super fun. is a blast. And I think it's actually pretty quiet. 
Um, I've been told that just like the rest of the bike, the motor is a, it's a little bit of a pre-production kind of setup. And they're like, you know, it shouldn't be quite this loud. But to me, this is still quieter than the old generation three Bosch motors. So I'm very impressed. Yeah, I'm, I've really enjoyed just looking at these bikes. And for me, this is kind of like save the best for last. I like that they also included a huge reflector back here that there's actually like a handle kind of built into this saddle. A lot of little things. We spent some time with these bikes. The pedals are, they're okay. I, sometimes I replace these with like magnesium Welgo pedals that are bigger and they've got these pins and you can color match them. You can get some blue ones to call out those accents on the frame. Yeah, I feel like that's pretty good. Joaquin, do you feel like there's anything we missed? Uh, I think we pretty much got everything with this one, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a neat bike. Guys, for all the details, all the specs and stuff written out, and this other bike, so you can compare the two using our compare tool. We'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Please chime in if you feel like we missed something or there's something additional you'd like to see, and we'll do our best to get that uh, out for you. As always, ride safe. Love you. See you next time.